Hi, if you want to make a fun and quick and easy sewing project, uh, either for a 4-H class or for um, your own kiddos in your own home, I have the project just for you. My name is Galen Peterson. I work for Utah State University in Lowell, Utah. And uh, today we're going to make a beach towel bag. Very simple to make. All you need is a beach towel and um, you know, any kind of beach towel that you would like. You need a half a yard of coordinating fabric. Uh, typically you would prefer a, a heavier fabric for the bag. Um, you will need a zipper and some webbing for the strap. Um, and I need my glasses. I'll show you how fun these beach bags are. Um, this is the, the backing. This is the towel itself. You and right inside here is a fun little pocket that you can use to carry everything you need to go to the pool or to the beach. You know, you put your swimming suit in there. You can put your goggles. Um, of course, money to pay to get in. All the kind of fun things that you will need will fit right in this fun little beach bag. The first thing you do for this beach towel bag is um, lay your the bag material out um, nice and flat. Put your zipper on the material to measure where it's going to start and end. And when I teach kids in the 4-H class, I will have them measure exactly, of course, but um, for today, we'll just eyeball it. Pretty simple to do. And just put a pin at the beginning and at the end. There are many ways to insert a zipper. The way we're going to do it today is we're going to sew a regular seam down to the end of the zipper, and then we're going to sew a basting seam to the other end, and then a regular seam again, and then we're going to unpick the basting. Um, just makes it easier for kids to, to follow um, the area where the zipper is supposed to be inserted. You can, there are some people that uh, just, just press that seam open and then do it down both sides. But for today, we're going to baste it because this is typically kids that you're going to have make these bags. So we'll just sew a regular 5 8 inch seam down to the first pin. Make sure you back stitch. Now, when you come to your first marking, make sure you do not run over your pin. It can cause all kinds of damage to your sewing machine, your needles. Then change it to a basting stitch. And you will baste it to the next pin. This really doesn't take any time at all. It's so much fun for kids to have their own little beach towel. Then you put it back to your normal stitch. Back stitch again. And finish it off. Okay, at this point now you will press that seam open. Pressing is really important when you're sewing. It helps solve all kinds of problems if you make sure your seams are nice and pressed open. Especially on a zipper, you want that zipper to fit right into that seam. So you want to make sure that's pressed Nice and open and flat. And sometimes this is a little difficult for kids, so it's just good to tell them you're not in a hurry. Just take your time and do your best. 4-H is all about learn by doing, so, you know, if they make mistakes, that's fine. Okay, so when you get to that point, you're going to undo your zipper a little ways and look for where you, you did your back stitching and that's where you're going to have the end of your zipper. Now you can use a zipper foot. Um, on these machines, uh, this is a Bernina 330, and a lot of machines you can move the needle position 
and so on it works out well on this one just to to move your needle position so that's what I'm going to do instead of changing to a zipper foot just saves a little time and it works great once again I do a back stitch and you're just going to put the teeth of that zipper right down your seam right down the middle of your seam and it just guides right along those zipper teeth and it's really easy to make a nice straight seam um, when you get down there a ways you can zip your zipper back up and then just put the middle of the zipper or the teeth right down that seam Okay, so you just continue sewing down that side of the zipper till you come to the bottom. Um, stop with your needle still in the zipper and the fabric. Just turn it to the side and go across your zipper, making sure not to hit the metal stop point there. And on this, I like to back stitch just to make sure my zipper's in snug. You go across. Okay, and lift your fabric up again, turn it, and just head up the other side, making sure you're um, catching the seam and the fabric of the bag. And just head up the other side. The, the foot guides right to the side of that zipper, so it makes a nice guide for the seam, the stitches to follow. When you get close to the top again, stop with your needle down and just push your zipper open so you don't have to run into that extra space there. Just kind of work it with your thumb down past the place that you're sewing. Now this is, this is a, the way you would sew a zipper if you were sewing a, on a pillow or a, um, not a dress. Typically a dress you insert zippers a little differently, but this works for anything that you want the zipper closed on both ends. And that is the hardest part of the whole thing right there. Make sure you clip your threads. If, um, if students are going to put articles in the fair, you will want them to make sure that they finish the edges of all the um, all the cloth, all their seams have finished edges so it just looks nice and neat. Okay, so there's, there's a zipper. And um, when you take out the basting stitches, all you have to do is just kind of put that on your finger and, and you can see how it separates right there. And it's really easy to just, just clip those little stitches right there and unpick your and pick that uh, basting that you've put in for that zipper. This is a little bit of a scary part with um, a lot of kids in the class <laughs> because we just tell them, take your time, go really slow, just cut one little thread at a time because zip, um, seam rippers are sharp and they can rip right through the material. But if you use that basting stitch, it opens that up pretty well so you can see where those stitches are and just hold it across your finger and, and if kids make mistakes you know I've uh, had a lot of people tell me they had really really bad experiences with sewing classes because the instructor was so adamant that it had to be perfect but we learn by doing if we make mistakes that's good we learn. We learn from our mistakes. That's why I tell the kids, it's not a mistake unless you didn't learn anything from it. Okay, you have your zipper. So now you make sure you press that. And you, you have that zipper open because the next step that you're going to do, you have to turn that um, right side out. And if your zipper is shut, you won't be able to do that. And I'll show you that in just a second. That may be a little bit difficult to understand. Okay, so next thing you're going to do with right sides together, lay out that pocket. And you're going to fold it, fold it down about two and a half, three inches. And this, 
you know, this is a, its preference. It's not going to make a huge difference um, how far down that is, but just, just fold it down a little ways and then make sure you pin this. I pin with the heads to the outside, so as I'm going along stitching, I can take those pins out quickly. Now all you're going to do is sew up those two sides, and on this I just use a half inch seam. Make sure our needle's in the right spot again. Back stitch. Don't run over your pin. It's music to a seamstress's ears when the machine sounds so good and smooth. It's important to keep your sewing machines oiled usually says in the books how often they suggest that they're oiled. Um, it usually says so many hours of use. So just make sure you look in your, in your manual to find out exactly how to take care of your sewing machine. I've had, I have had some people come in and, and they say they have never oiled their machines and they wonder why it sounds like a threshing machine. Threshing machine threshes grain for those of you who are maybe not farmers. And they're loud. And we are almost through. And the thing with this project is it's so useful. In fact, I'm afraid that in our sewing camp we made these this year. And uh, we, we tell all the kids, uh, now make sure you put your, your bags in the fair. And I've been to the pool and I see so many of the kids that are using theirs. <laughs> so I'm afraid we're not going to have very many entries in the fair. <laughs> but I, so I just, I say, I'm so glad you like your bag. Can you make another one to put in the fair? <laughs> and it's fun. Some of them have said, yeah, I made one for my little brother. And, it's, it's fun. So now you will turn it right side out. Now see if that zipper was closed, you could not turn this right side out. So, and we had several kids that did that. So just make sure you leave that zipper open while you're, pr while you're sewing that bag. And then we will give it one final press. Get all your corners out. You can either roll your corners or you can use a pin. Get them out so they're nice and square. So many times it's fun just to have a project for your kids to do at home with you. And uh, nothing better than teaching them some life skills. And sewing is definitely a life skill used to be when I was when I was a young mother I didn't I hadn't sewn until I got married at that time you could buy um, you could sew clothes for about half the price of that you could buy clothes now it's not hardly that way because material has become so expensive I told my granddaughter I needed to borrow her beach towel to make a bag, and she at first threw a little tiny fit. No. I said, I promise you'll love it. You'll love it. So I hurried and made it into a beach bag, and pretty soon her two little sisters came in. We want our towels like that one. So I had plenty of practice. Okay, there we are. There's your pouch all ready. So now all we have to do is lay out the towel. And you're going to place your pouch just in the middle of the towel, a little ways up, probably about three inches from the bottom. Once again, not an exact science. With kids, I do have a measure to make sure they're the same from each side. 
edges so that they look nice and standard. And because I like the kids to learn how to use a measuring tape. Right on. I like it when I guess right. Once again, you'll just pin this on. But, like I said, our entries into the fair won't be as much this year. <laughs> All right, so now I have some webbing. And I have actually burned the ends of each end with just a lighter. You just light it and just melt the ends so it doesn't fray. So you can or you don't have to do that, but I like to do that just to make sure that it, it doesn't fray. And I tell the kids, make sure this is, you have a little tiny bit of that showing through just so that you make sure you get it all hooked in. Okay, so you put the end of the webbing right there. Make sure it's going to be straight. I'm going to stick out just a little ways right there. Double check. Woohoo! Works. All right, we're about through. Okay, make sure that black is strong. Now it's just a matter of top stitching down and around and up the other side and you have your bag. So I, I'm going to back stitch across that webbing just to make sure that's going to hold it in really good and tight. Because you have to have a bag to handle. And for this outer seam, I'm just going right along the inside of the foot. Just use that as my guide. When you get to the corner, leave your needle in, in the cloth. Pick up your zipper foot. Go again. Now we had one little gal, but when she got to the top of her towel, she turned it again, went right across the top. So we got a chuckle out of that one. We told them the way to make sure is just make sure you can see a little bit of it sticking out. And then back stitch to hold it in place. Now, if you want, and we did have the kids go around a second time just to make sure it was nice and secure, uh, which is really a good idea to do that. So, so when you get through swimming, here's your bait, here's your towel, and you wrap it around you, and you're all nice and dry. But then, when you before you get to the pool or on your way home from the pool, and you've taken all your stuff out of your pockets, you just reach in and grab the corners, just turn it right side out and if you want to be really nice and fancy you can fold it over nicely and then fold it down reaching over my machine and make it fit nicely in your bag or if you do like my grandkids you'll just stuff it in and there's a fun easy quick useful beach bag with the little zipper pocket right there to put all of your goodies in your goggles and your money and your swimming suit didn't take very much time at all and you come up with a useful project that kids can do and they will actually use them